Hi, I'm Arjun from Wizards.exe. In this video, we're going to go over sensor wiring. Right here, I have a control hub, but this video should also apply to FTC teams for the expansion hub. There are five sensors that Rev put in the first global kit. We have the touch sensor, the 2 meter distance sensor, the potentiometer, the color distance sensor V2, and the magnetic limit switch. All of these sensors use the same cable, which is a JSTPH 4 pin cable. As you can see, there are many of these ports on the si this side of the control hub and expansion hub. You might think that it's very simple to just plug it in and be done with it. But there's a little bit more to sensor wiring than you think. You need to know which place on the control hub or expansion hub that you're plugging it into. For example, you can see that there's I2C, there's digital, and there's analog ports that all have JSTPH 4-pin connectors. You can also see on the other side there are encoder ports that use that same connector. So this connector is very common on the control hub, and it's easy to mix what up what you're pl plugging in. Each sensor comes with the JSTPH 4-pin cable, but you can also buy additional cables from RevRobotics.com or for First Global Teams, there are more JSTPH cables in your First Global kit. We're going to start off with the touch sensor, and the first thing that we want to do is plug in the JSTPH cable into the touch sensor. It only goes in one way, which is really helpful. You're going to know when it's plugged in. A touch sensor is a digital, um, a digital sensor, meaning that it plugs into the digital ports. One thing that's actually really nice about the Rev, hub, the Rev Expansion Hub and Control Hub is the fact that they use a 4-pin connector, so they have actually 8 digital ports, even though there's only 4 JSTPH 4-pin four ports. This is useful for FTC teams, where you can actually put 2 sensors to 1 digital port, but for first global teams, you're going to need to know which one you're plugging it into. So if I plug the touch sensor into port, the port labeled 0-1, this touch sensor is going to be in port 1, which is useful for your robot configuration file. For 2-3, it's going to be in port 3. For 4-5, it's going to be in port 5. For 6-7, it's going to be in port 7. Another sensor that's very um, similar to the touch sensor is the magnetic limit switch. This is the same type of sensor as a touch sensor as it gives us the same exact output, except it uses a magnetic, it's a different type of sensor, but it uses the same output. So our first step again is to plug in the back and it goes into digital ports, the same ones that touch sensors go into. So you can see I can just plug it in like that. Okay, so now I've gotten the two digital devices out of the way. The next two that I'm going to go over are the 2 meter distance sensor and the Rev Color Distance Sensor V2. One thing about these sensors is that they can look very similar, so here are a few factors to um, determine the difference between them. On the back of the sensors, some of, for some of them it will actually tell you the name of the sensor, the type of sensor it is. For example, on this one, it does say 2 meter distance sensor. Another thing is the color distance sensor V2 has a switch on it. This is used for turning the LED on and off. The magnetic limit switch also looks very similar, but it only has one small hole at the top, which is for the LED determining if it is triggered or not triggered. These plug into the sections that say I2C. So, you can see I can just plug in the JSTPH 4 pin connector and simply plug it into an I2C port, which there are four of, labeled 0, 1, 2, and 3. So now this is plugged in. You can do the same exact thing for the color distance sensor V2, where you just plug it in and uh, into both in the I2C ports. You can see that is also plugged in. The final sensor that we're going to go over is the potentiometer. And this is a much different sensor. It looks much different than all of the others. It's essentially a rotation sensor, but it can't rotate 360 degrees continuously. What we can do for this is plug it into the back, and this one plugs into the analog ports. 
Now, with the digital ports, it was the greater number of the two in the labeled numbers. For analog ports, it's the lesser. So if I plug it into port 0, 1, 0 1 for analog, it's going to be in port 0. 2 3 is going to be in port 2. So now I have our potentiometer plugged in. You can see that all of these sensors plug in very similarly, but into different ports. So it's important to know the differences between them, so you make sure you plug it into the correct port. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and email wizards.exe at gmail.com or comment with any questions. Thank you.